Welcome to Portage Mule's Walleye Opening Day 2023 trip through Mudrow. We got Rob. I'm Rob. I'm 46 and I like long walks on the beach. I like puppies. None of that's true, actually. Look at me. Do I look like I take long walks anywhere? I suppose if you put the fridge in the other room. And me, Ben. That was a lot to take in in the first 30 seconds, and I promise we'll get there. But let's start this trip from the beginning. So here we are. It is uh, May 2023. We're out at the Mudrow entry. Uh, ben and I are getting ready to put in. We happen to meet a couple of uh, fans, Tiger and Barry, with their sidekick Rufus. And uh, so we're all getting ready to head up, and hopefully we'll get a chance to see them once we get up into the Crooked Lake area. Well, it's 625. And we are just getting in to Mudrow. So we already stopped this morning to get our bait. Uh, we had a five-star breakfast of, uh, I had pizza Lunchables. Rob had ham and cheese with uh, and, uh, an exciting start to the morning. Yeah, it really was. We it was actually busy coming in here and uh, there were people in front of us and behind us. We thought it was the paparazzi, but it was just other paddlers. The uh, the entry to Mudrow right now is high. It's Friday the 12th, um, so we were able to launch right from the parking lot, which saved a portage, and we are excited about that. The river down here is pretty high. We'll see how long it takes us this time. The, the real question is, how does the Horse River look? Because if you saw our May video, you know it was extremely high. May video from last year. Uh, that was that was very high. We're we're not expecting it to be that high. We can already tell, at least just by this water, that it's not nearly as high. If you guys see in back of us all the grass that uh, is popping up here through the water, uh, we didn't have to paddle around this grass last year. We just paddled straight over top of it. So. It's already like a foot down from where it was last year. Even better news, the log, or the log, the giant tree that uh, was across the river here uh, is now, someone has come in and cut it over the winter. So it is no longer a danger. It does look like it's just moved a little further down the river, but as of right now, you can get around it. Seven Eleven. We are on the portage from Mudrow over to Sandpit. It's 85 rods, and it's commonly known as Heart Attack Hill. But from this side, from going in, the Heart Attack Hill is going the other way. So it's not too bad, but. It's a little early for this. The weather for this week is, knock on wood, it's supposed to look pretty good. It's actually pretty hot. Yesterday in Ely it was 80 degrees. Today it's supposed to get to 75. So for the beginning of May, that's doing pretty good. But it is supposed to get a little colder, high 60s for the rest of the week. And of course, there'll be rain sometime. But the ice out happened earlier this week. So that's awesome. We were a little worried. It was pretty late this year. So I know some people were, some people further east, the, the lakes are still iced over in the boundary waters. So when I, we were telling people we were coming up here, they were asking if we were bringing our ice skates. Because of the amount of gear we bring, Rob and I do have to double portage, which just means we take two trips because we have two packs, the food pack and the canoe, of course. We'd like to get it down to a single portage, but not with the stuff we bring. 7.30, we are done with Heart Attack Hill. We're in Sand Pit. Thought we lost a paddle. Thought we lost a life jacket. 
But we found both of them. If it was a snake, it would have bit us. It's eight o'clock. We are on the portage from Sandpit over to Tin Can Mike. And this portage is awesome. It's 137 rods, but it is completely flat. It's a little muddy this time of year, but not as bad as last May where it was just a river. But we should mention a rod is the equivalent to 16 feet. And for our Canadian viewers, that is 5.0292 meters. And a little known fact, do you know why it's called the rod? Because Rob was already taken. Nope. Oh. It was invented by Dennis Rodman. He was an amazing backpacker, portager, and outdoor canoe enthusiast. He was also pretty good at basketball. So the guys we met at the parking lot, Tiger and Barry, are also going to be going down the Horse River, so we're all a little nervous uh, that it might be a little high water, so we're all going to try to traverse the river together, just kind of a strength in numbers sort of thing, but I think that's awesome coming out here in the camaraderie between the paddlers. 8.30 and we are in Tin Can Mike, so I should say none of these these first couple legs, Mudro and Sandpit and Tin Can Mike aren't aren't very big. So when we're loading the packs, you know, yeah, we're keeping them low and in the boat, but we're not working too much at trying to distribute the weight too evenly. Uh, even if it was windy, it wouldn't be that much of an issue on these legs. It's just not like what we'll do on on horse or certainly when we get past uh, basswood, but we try to keep all of our gear together on the portages and make it easier for us when we're loading and easier for everyone around us to get by. So. First candy stop of the morning. Off a of Willy Wonka trail. Ten o'clock, huh? and we have made it into the mouth of the Horse River. The water is looking high, a lot higher than September and June, and we're hoping for a lot less portages than September and June. So, this first little set of rapids at the at the start, we are going to try to run it. Although it may not look like much, it's still super nerve-wracking running these rapids. One little mistake could be pretty bad and lead to some pretty wet gear. Or worse, wet snacks. We were able to do it easily, and Tiger and Barry behind us had no problem. The first official portage on the Horse River is pretty flat, pretty easy, and has a wooden walkway, but it can get muddy and slippery when it ends and it's on the south side of the river, not on the north side as most maps indicate. The next set of rapids is not long after the portage, and is not nearly as intense as the first set at the beginning of the river, but here the river is wider and shallower, so pick your line as you see fit. It's 11.15, we're done with the second portage on horse, and we're gonna transfer our minnows from the bags that we picked up at the bait store into our bait caddies now. Um, we do this, it's been six hours since we picked them up. We got them at 5.02 this morning, and they typically last about six to eight hours uh, in those bags, so they're probably starting to warm up a little bit and uh, running out of 
oxygen in the bag. So we've made the mistake of waiting until later to transfer them into our bait caddies and it didn't work out so well. We, we lost a lot of minnows. So we're gonna do it now. The downside of that is we still have two more portages to do. Um, so we're just gonna have to hand carry the bait caddies as opposed to leave them in the packs. But it's well worth it if it keeps the minnows alive. Are we there yet? It's just around the corner. Are we there yet? Uh, just a little more. The last portage on the Horse River is always kind of a muddy mess. It has a little bit of an incline both ways, but nothing crazy. And it's 73 rods. One o'clock. Welcome to Canada. We are on the portage around Lower Basswood Falls and it is super high and we could hear it for miles away. The current's going really strong. You have to be real careful getting up to the portage because it's right at the mouth of the rapids. But it's a short portage, just kind of up and over this little hill. Well, it's 1.15 and we are just below Lower Basswood Falls into Crooked Lake. So, not making the best of time, but it's not too bad. The lake really opens up below the falls, so have your map handy. After about 30 minutes, you'll come upon amazing cliffs on the west side of the lake and be able to see pictographs painted on the walls. There's supposed to be pictures of a horned anthropomorphic figure which I googled for you it means an animal having human characteristics a shaman in a sweat lodge figures of canoes herring a pelican moose elk and a sturgeon in a net after a couple more hours of paddling you'll reach Wednesday Bay and the site of Table Rock now almost completely covered well it's exactly three o'clock and we have made it to Three Mile Island just in the nick of time. <laughs> yep. So we've come up with a new scale, the MTM scale, minutes to meltdown. What are we at? And it's on a scale of zero to ten. Uh, we're at a, we're at about a one right now. I mean, Serious? I mean, yeah, it came down after coming here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but you I mean, haven't you haven't had your Snickers yet? No, but I I I did eat two Tootsie rolls and some sprays. <laughs> that helps. Did. But Rob did bring a Snickers this time on his own. I did. And where's it at? So I need to explain something to Rob. There's several different sizes of Snickers. And there's the minis that, you know, they hand out for Halloween. There's the fun size. They're just about two minis. There's a regular size, a king size. Do I have it in here? And then there's a Rob size. Uh -huh. what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Give it to me. The whole thing's a Snickers? <laughs> yes, it's one pound. Oh my God. <laughs> This is unbelievable. This can't even be real. It is. Would you look at it? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> we gotta eat up. Has to be gone before we leave the island. <laughs> well, we have great news. We got here at 5.30, we've just been setting up camp. Not our number one pick. Probably won't even make it into the top 10, but 
all of the spots around here were taken. So we paddled all the way to Thursday Bay and there was still nothing in there. So we came back to the last spot open down here. Rob did give it five star rating. It definitely deserves five stars if there was uh, out of 20. Yeah, so it's not the best, but we're setting everything up. Uh, we were gonna cook steaks tonight, but they are still frozen solid. So we will do the jalapeno cheddar brats. Onions, and peppers, and potatoes. Potatoes. Rob's manning the fire's favorite activity. Yeah, especially when it won't start. He loves it when it won't start. It is uh, about eight o'clock the night before the walleye open. Make sure that you plan for all sorts of things. Um, today, we had a hard time finding a campsite. You gotta have contingency plans. I'm too out of this to do this. I don't understand why those other people are faster than us. You know, we thought we packed lighter. We made, I mean, we made good time, I thought. But I mean, it's eight o'clock and we're just now getting things wrapped up and we, we're up at four o'clock. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's a rough gig, but if somebody was behind us, I don't know where they would go. There was one group that came in late. Yeah, that's right, there was. There's not a new spot, so. So, even when you think everything's going to work out perfect, it may not, so. Right now, I'm just totally wasted, tired. We paddled all day, portaged all day. It was just long. But be aware that, that that's the nature of the beast sometimes. In order to come out here and have fun, sometimes you've got to work super hard. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the opening day of walleye season in... The boundary waters. Ben and I are getting out now at about seven o'clock. It's about a uh, 20 minute paddle to where we're going fishing today. And this morning we're gonna be fishing with jigs and minnows. We're using a three ounce jig. Ben's gonna be on a blue, yellow, and orange. Three ounce jig? Three eighths ounce. Did I say three ounce? Yeah. So we're going deep today. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, three eighths ounce, uh, three eighths of an ounce jig. Um, the water, as we paddled through it yesterday, going over to Thursday Bay to look for a campsite, is moving very swiftly. Um, it's moving faster than any time we've been up here before. A lot of people don't bring anchors with them. And that is a key. If you come up here, you've got to bring an anchor. Uh, we use a basketball hoop with some carabiners to lock it off and then a just a small anchor rope. That way when you get up here, you can just pick a big rock to put inside it. We are just now getting close to our spot. I'm going to show you. So here we've got our Got our anchor. Ben got it all set up this morning. This is what it looks like. It's just a put together with a couple carabiners. Ooh. I'd say we're ready to maybe we've got a long rope, so you want to drop here and see what happens. So I had misspoke earlier and said that we were using three ounce jigs. And now that we're in our spot. I think we need three ounce jigs. <laughs> I have got this three eighths and I cannot get on the bottom. Okay, we got first fish of the morning. And the first walleye, let me get the net. Oh, I got it. Did I mention it was first cast? I even gave Rob a head start. All right. Oh, 
first cast. First fish. Yeah, but if I remember correctly. Yeah. Didn't I give you that jig and tell you right away this one's going to be a killer? He did, in all fairness. I could have taken that jig for myself. <laughs> a 3 8 ounce, short shank, bread hook. It's got yellow on the bottom, pink on the top, and purple on the front. Oh, what a beautiful first walleye. 22 and a half. I like it. We're, uh, another fish. First for me of the day. Let's see if we can bring it into the boat. <laughs> nice. Okay, a little bit smaller. There he is. And let him go back down into the water. He was probably about a 16. Just got a big hit there, big bite. There we go. That's a good one. Little walleye. Little one. Oh. Just a little guy. Coming in about 14 inches. That's a big one. Yep. Another big one. Got a double. Double? Yeah. All right. That's a good size one too. Look at him. Oh. You need the net? Hold nope. on. No, he got off. So oh no. That works out okay. Okay. This guy got off too. Boy, he's a monster. He's bigger oh. than the last one. Yeah. You can hold him up so he can see back here. I got the camera on you. <laughs> he's nice. Look at him. He's a little fatter, maybe. He's about the same length though, isn't he? Yeah. Look at that. All you're gonna do is go down there and you're gonna pretend like they don't see you. But they do. That quick enough for you? No, oh, little guy. Don't lose my don't lose my minnow. <sighs> he threw it. He threw my minnow. So just a little guy. You need a heavy enough jig to be able to feel the bottom. So in this current. Seems like the 3 8 ounce is working pretty good. Kind of bouncing it along the bottom, raising it up slowly, and just bringing it back down. It's all slow. I think because the ice out, you know, just happened earlier this week, so I don't know. I don't think the fish are moving too fast. Ooh, I felt that in the front of the boat. He's net worthy. Okay. Okay. Back to you? Yeah, that's fine. I could have probably landed him, but I didn't want to lose the counter. Back into the deep. So okay. Drip down a little bit. Go. Oh. 
big one. Oh, he is big. Oh, we're gonna need the net. Stay on, buddy, stay on. There you go. We are at 20 and a half. I don't have a... He's been hit on by a northern. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. And he's off. You gotta learn how to buck them. I do, but I just, I drop them every time and then they fly. And then I'm like, in the video. And why do I feel like that's gonna make it? <laughs> there we go. Smaller guy. And in the boat. Where's he at? Sixteen. Now that you've got your minnow on. Oh. That's nine. He's a cutie. Well, folks, that concludes our morning edition of out on the water for opening day with a total walleye count of how many? Nine walleye. <laughs> we'll see you soon. The first day means a big breakfast. We normally eat what we call pre-breakfast, such as a granola bar or Tootsie Roll, before we go out fishing and make a real breakfast after fishing for a few hours. We bring one egg per person per day and pancake mix that only requires water. We also bring in frozen bacon and cook it the first couple of days and save the grease and aluminum foil and use it for cooking the rest of the week. Some people ask why we prefer to go for walleye and the answer is because it tastes amazing. Rob said that he'll keep eating walleye until he can fish for chewy sprees. But until those are in the lake, he'll go for walleye. Hello again. It is still opening day, 1.45 in the afternoon. And we are heading back out to fish. Would you like one? Yeah. That was the perfect throw. In my face? It was not in your face. It was your life jacket. Hit me right here. It's on your face. But it was pretty much my face. <laughs> my face is long. It's like a horse. <laughs> That's a fish. A nice walleye. And over. Okay. Let's see. Seventeen inches. Ready? It's gonna be a quick one. So 
So those of you who are watching, it just goes to show you how important the anchor is. Without that anchor, you could not fish this area. Oh, he said a hit. I should say more than a hit, he was on there for a second. <laughs> and there he is. Nice. Just a little guy. And he's off. I'm going with a blue and chartreuse glitter. Look at that. Look at it, would you? Just look at it. Red shank long. There's a fish. He's about a sixteen. Got a little measurement on him. He is sixteen, just over. Brings us Uh oh. What? Number thirteen. One right now? That's yeah. next? No, that was thirteen. We can't stop there. There you go. You got something there? Yeah. Small. inches that was on this pink and white red hooked uh, 3 eighths ounce you didn't see but I already went through two three sure uh, so you had the uh, blue one in the beginning yeah and then I had the Halloween jig then you know you had the green Oh, the yeah, tire stripe. The tire stripe. And then I had the Halloween jig. And now that one. And now this one. There's a fish. Let's just see if we can keep him on. Seems like he might be decent sized. That's him. That's him right there. Beautiful. 16. Well, we just got back from our afternoon fishing and we're out on the hunt for wood and got to see that grouse. That was pretty cool. I, we hear them all the time. I've seen them elsewhere, but I've never seen them up here. And I think it was just this afternoon we were hearing the grouse and Rob said, that thing's got to be right behind our camp. Tonight is gonna sound a lot like last night. Potatoes. 
peppers, an onion, but instead of jalapeno cheddar broth, steaks that were frozen yesterday and are now room temperature. Rob is going to flavor the potatoes and onions and peppers with essence of emerald season. Tonight we are also trying, they didn't have slender rounds, so we were trying Bubba's Skinny Bagels. Everything. Along with garlic, herb, and butter. Butter. Garlic and herb butter. Well, after an awesome first day fishing, Rob and I retired to our uneven campsite for the night. Good morning. It is Sunday at 7.15. We are headed out and we get to keep walleye today. We don't have anything else for dinner. Rob got a great night's sleep last night. He kept me up all night snoring. But as long as he gets his rest, I'm happy. Our walleye count is at 15. And I think only one of them was under 15 inches. Is that right, Rob? Uh, I think maybe two. Maybe two under 15. Everything else was, was solid. A uh, couple over 20, but most in that 16 to 18 inch range. If we can get a fish for dinner, we will be happy. Rob had a breakfast of or should I say pre-breakfast? Rob had a pre-breakfast of Snickers. I myself did not indulge in that. I went for Reese's instead. Much, much healthier. I'm, I'm very health conscious. I just want to correct the record on a couple of things. I don't snore. Very loud. But uh, yeah, lucky day yesterday, 15 walleyes. And today we're going to go for another 15 plus gonna keep some. Ben's gonna get to try out the new fillet knife today. I did have Snickers for breakfast, I won't lie. And uh, I did bring my other pre, can anyone guess what it is? Pre-breakfast Tootsie Roll. There's a nice walleye. Oh yeah. You want the net? Yeah. Nice, big, beautiful walleye. Yeah, he's probably 21. All right, for those of you out there wondering what we do in celebration of the first walleye of the second day, 
we had a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> I don't recommend a candy diet unless you're an elf. But I do have a cat named Buddy. So that puts me close enough. There we go. Fish on. Yeah, he looks like a nice one. Yeah. Oh boy, that could be a northern. No, it's not. Yeah, I know. All right. Boy, that's a Wonker town here. Unbelievable the release. in the water. He did not want to stick around. That fish, I don't know if you can see, but this is the white and pink jig that I'm using with the red hook and just a regular shaft. Okay, we got something. Oh. Yeah. He's 20 inches probably. Oh yeah. Still alive in there. Oh yeah! Look at that color. <laughs> this is awesome. Man. Um. Just under twenty-one, so twenty and a half. So cool. It's like holding a block of ice. That one was on the same pink and white jig. There's a walleye. Nice. There's a walleye. No. This is probably worth the net. Here he comes. Oh, I just got him hooked funny or what? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Ready? Here he is. Woo! He wanted to make an entry. He did. Come on, baby. That's a good fish. This one is? Yeah. Unless you think it's a oh, stick. No, it's a big <laughs> one. He's net worthy. Yeah. Oh, I barely got him. You good? 
Yep, thank you. Another beautiful walleye. See there? See down his mouth? Okay, he's going back in. So this is a uh, glitter jig. It's blue, yellow, chartreuse, I guess, Scotia orange, and some lead showing through. Can you explain to them how much a Scotia is? A Scotia is um, a little bit less than some. And it's a little bit more than nil. Just a skosh. Son of a gun. Oh, you're a fish. <laughs> you're a fish on a rock. Or you're a massive something or other. It's a rock. There was definitely a fish there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there was definitely a rock involved. And I just don't know how it played out, but that thing just snapped. It's probably a 10-pound walleye. Well, I think it probably was. And I think that was the problem. Is it was such a lunker, I thought it was a rock. And I found your snag. <sighs> yeah. Mm. I'll just keep using this pink one. So that's the last ditch effort of trying to retrieve your lure is grabbing the reel itself and pulling back. Make sure you got a good solid grip on it. And hopefully it pops off. Yes. Use Rob's Tootsie Roll grip. I only have one of these. Would you like this? It's a, it's a shiny glitter ball. Uh, you watch. Because I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. So I brought one of gold and one of silver. That's the money one. And then it's going to be like, fish on, fish on, fish on. I lost it. There we go. I get the net. Oh, I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, another big boy. She's a beauty. Here we go. Whoops. Caught on my new disco ball jig. We should come here when it's lower and just remove all the rocks. Why doesn't the forestry service do that? Yeah, forestry service. Why can't you at least mark where the rocks are? <laughs> I don't know what is inside of this inside of this thing. It smells horrible. Inside of what? Inside of this bucket of this my tackle box. I mean, it literally smells horrible, and it's brand new. My MTM scale is 
non-existent. Like, Seriously? yeah, I mean, I'm fine. After a few hours fishing in the morning, we head back upstream for our real breakfast. Instead of paddling up the fast moving water, we walk our canoe up using the line from our anchor. We normally try to have our dinner walleye on a stringer by this point, just in case the weather turns bad or something prevents us from fishing later. Just be sure to give it a long enough lead so that it can swim fine, so it stays alive, and also allows it to escape from predators above and below. Sunday afternoon, 3.30. We had a great breakfast. We made bagel sandwiches, bacon, eggs, everything bagels. And it was absolutely amazing and we have to figure out a way to bring cheese up here so we can have bacon, egg, and cheese on a toasted bagel with garlic and herb butter. It hit the spot. We checked on Gary the grouse. He's still doing good. He's up on his perch. He's watching over us. And we saw Tiger and Barry that we met on our way in. That was pretty awesome. They came over to our campsite. They're looking for a place to stay uh, somewhere by us tonight. We kind of told them it's a little full, but there was one close by that we think the people left. So if we pointed them in that direction. Hopefully they, they got it, but we'll find out here shortly. But it was cool. They stopped in. I had some leftover coffee from breakfast, still warm, uh, because I made a second cup because I spilt the first one and I hadn't gotten to it yet. So I did not cry over it. I just made another one. Um, very, very fortuitous. Is that the word? It sounds like it should be the word, but it worked out. So they stopped in. Uh, Rufus came up and took a nap. He'd been balancing on the boat all day and that was awesome. Like I said, it's 3.30 now. We're gonna go out for a little afternoon of fishing. We're not sure if we're gonna stay above the falls or below. It's, it's a little bit of a work getting back. It's, it's too fast to be paddling up. Well, it's almost too fast to be paddling up. It takes a lot of work to paddle up. So we actually get out, there's a point uh, where the river narrows that we can get out and walk the canoe up the falls and it's it's a lot easier it may not save any time but it's a lot easier than paddling as hard as you can to get up the falls i could sit back and rob could just paddle us up but it wouldn't be fair so we're using our minnows they're still looking good this is one of the unnamed containers of our minnows. But we, we were really worried about them coming up here. So when we had them in the boat, as we paddled through Crooked and through Basswood, you have to make sure to stop and give them fresh water. You'll, you'll see them all start to come up to the top and they like the little bubbles on the top and I don't know, that's telling me that they're low on oxygen. So dunk them in the water, give them a fresh batch of water and they're good to go. So we went to our area above the falls, had a little bit of a meltdown. The anchor rope was all tangled up five ways from Sunday. I mean, I was ready to cut the anchor rope, so, so anchor uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you what the outcome would be at this point. I just know that at that point I was ready to cut the anchor rope. You ought to put a number on it. Just ask me. Out of what? Ten. I was probably, for a moment there, I probably peaked at a good solid eight. And I'm down now. I'm back down to zero. Um, we're starting over. We're starting over. But we're going to head down below the falls. Um, It's a little uh, harder to get to. Well, I take that back. It, it's easy to get to, it's harder to get back. You just go with the, literally go with the flow. 
but this current is just so swift that over here, you know, in this area, there's rocks underneath here all the way. There's a big rock over there. I can't steer this thing with the way the wind's blowing and the way that we're floating. Uh, there we go, a little bit. But, uh, yeah, this is wanting to take us the other way. I'm gonna just show you where we're going so you can see. what we're talking about. So we're just gonna ease down the middle of this and just kind of go with the flow until we can get past it. There's a lot of whirlpools, a lot of things that'll make you spin. So you just wanna get in and get out. Like there's a whirlpool there. Whirlpool here, going through another one. And see, we're starting to spin. We just want to get out of it. Holy cow, that came out of nowhere. Well, I'll tell you what, that was about two inches from going in the canoe. There we go. Small, small. Might even be a bass. No, it's a small walleye. Disco ball got him again. Ah, there you go. No, no. Ah, away he goes. The way he was moving his head around, I thought it could have been a smallmouth. Brings us up to 22. I think he was about 14 inches. Nice fish. Yeah, he's, oh yeah, he's a fighter. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a pike. Oh, none of that. gonna get off he's gonna break the line look at that hook it's up through the top of him yeah he's not you're, he's not getting off nice what do you measure oh 24 inches I don't like to catch northern pike on jigs. When I fish for northern pike, I'll usually reach in and I'll grab my Larry's Copper Magic. That way I know for sure that I've got a solid hook. So after catching that northern on this jig, the jig's a little bent, but I think it'll be okay. Bend it back. Um, the other thing is, bent the hook just a little so I'm gonna bend that back a little bit but also you might have noticed that I had to cut the line and restring it anytime you catch a northern you want to feel your line make sure there's no tick marks or any uh, any disturbances that will keep you from landing that next big fish if somebody said that you 
could live here and you could build a cabin and everything would be supplied to you and you would have electricity and gas, running water, the whole deal. You build a full-on house. Food would be sent to you, but you would never be able to leave here. And you'd never have to worry about paying for anything. Would you do it? Oh, I was thinking the same thing. Like, I couldn't do it without Mexican food. Mexican food's amazing. Because I'm a gangster. Fishing gangster. a.m. on Monday, the sumpteenth. Not sure which day exactly. We're getting out for our morning fishing, and then we will be returning for lunch with uh, Tiger and Barry. They're going to meet us at the campsite, and we're going to do a lunch today. Last night fishing was a little slow, although Ben caught most of the fish and caught a massive 26 inch, 5.64 pound walleye. And I want to think, I'm not a walleye expert, so I, uh, I may be incorrect in 
this analysis. Um, but I want to say that we are very, very close to this uh, spawning season, so pre-spawn. We're noticing that these females are extremely large. We're talking about the walleye. And uh, most likely full of eggs. Man, I'll tell you what, look at the, look at the reflection off of here on the right side. Oh, the left side too. Get, can you get a picture of that? It wasn't even like that though, it was like this. See? You're sensitive. That's a bigger walleye. Oh! He's about ripped it out of my hands. He's not that big. Female. Yeah. Back in, yeah. Oh yeah, you guys wanna see that? Look at that fin. Oh, it's speckled. See the speckles? Huh? Fish on for right now. Nice. Taking my chances. He's only 16. Go back. Yeah. So today we're using an old crusty eye jig. You can see he's got there, he's got a red eye on this side. And a northern knocked his eye out on the other side. So he's he's a one-eyed jig. There we go. You want the net or yeah? Sixteen inches right there. My first walleye of the morning. Small guy. Little tiny guy. Oh, double. Does that count? No, I already have mine off. Yeah, he's a small one too. Don't, don't flick mine. I'm too late now. Yeah, just, uh, this one's, I hate to say it, this one's going in the even more of the wrong direction. He's not even 13. Send me on my way. Ooh, send me on my way. Send me on my way. There we go.
gonna break off. So I wanna. This is slowly start to go up with that. Try to grab the gear. Well, I tried to save one pull and lost three. Okay. Yeah. Might have ruined the GoPros. Oh, there's one. There's one. Are you aware? Grab, can you grab the. Just try to clear the gear. Yeah. Do we lose the other paddle? No, oh, there's three. Where? I want there. Okay. That's still on the fish, I think. No, your fish is floating in here. I'll be honest with you. Not that it matters, but you're... I'm so thankful for you being out there right now. I don't know how you did all that. Thanks for tuning in to part one of our opening day 2023 video. I know, just when it was getting good. But stay tuned to see how Rob and I deal with this situation and overcome our most expensive moment yet. Down a couple rods, some cameras, batteries, a fishing net, a cell phone. The trip is sure to only get better from here. Please like and subscribe to our channel to get updates on all of our future videos and happenings.